This is Elvin from Dr. Wealth. If you have been investing in Hong Kong stocks, you would have been very disappointed all these years because the Hong Kong stocks have been really underperforming compared to many other stock markets out there. So what is going on with Hong Kong stocks? Why are they so cheap? In this video, I'll give you three reasons why I think it is so. But before we begin, let's look at how bad or how cheap Hong Kong stocks really are. So there's this tracker fund of Hong Kong, which is essentially a Hang Seng Index ETF. And um, if you have bought this ETF 10 years ago and you hold until today, reinvested all the dividends along the way, you are still ending up with a loss. So this has been a really very terrible track record. And I'm not sure how many investors are that patient to wait 10 years to hold on something and yet make a loss. So it is that terrible. And no matter what we look at, whether is it from a technical analysis perspective or fundamental analysis, um, it really shows us that Hong Kong stocks is really very cheap right now. So let me blow up this chart for you. This is a 30 year chart, uh, weekly chart. Okay, so uh, 30 year weekly chart. So each bar represent a week. And look at this long term trend. Okay, it's on an upward movement. But what is surprising is that after I join all the bottom, bottoming points of the Hang Seng Index, we still see the current index broke below that lower bound trend line. This is very bearish from a technical standpoint because if you take a look at this uh, weekly chart over a long term period, it should be a very, very strong support. It's supposed to bounce off that, but yet it fell through. So that is a very bearish point. And I also drew another chart. This is based on the monthly chart. Okay, also a 30 year period. You can see the same effect. The uh, after joining all the lowest point of Hang Seng Index, yet the current Hang Seng Index still broke below that trend line. This again is very bearish. And even if we take a look at the fundamentals, which I will use the PE ratio for the ind indices, um, I compare it to SDI, FTSE 100, China CSI 300, US S&P 500 and NASDAQ composite, you will see that HSI is distinctly very cheap, right? At 6.6 .6 PE ratio. The rest of them are at least double digit. Even STI is at 11.9, UK is at 13.6, and NASDAQ is the most expensive, 34.7. Even China CSI 300, after China has underperformed, is still at a P ratio of 14.1. So it really shows that this Hang Seng Index is a bunch of value stock at this point in time. Uh, no matter TA or FA, right, Hang Seng Index look real cheap. So what could the possible reasons be? So the reason number one is that we all know US has been raising the interest rate. And when they raise the interest rate, the USD will strengthen. And HKD is packed to the US dollar. And the range they're supposed to keep within is this 7.75 to 7.85 per US dollar. And at this point in time, at the time of recording, the Hong Kong dollar exchange rate is 7.85 to 1 US dollar. It is at the maximum limit. So what has been happening is that the Hong Kong Monetary Authority has been buying Hong Kong dollar to strengthen it so that it doesn't uh, uh, go too far away from the strengthening US dollar. But what is this all about? So what if the Hong Kong dollar is strengthening? The issue is that Hong Kong dollar, when it strengthens, you will also inherit the interest rate that US is currently having. So which means that Hong Kong interest rate is rising as well. And what's wrong with rising interest rate is that it slows down business activity. Uh, business will take less loan, personal uh, loans will also go down because people will probably delay their purchase of uh, higher price items. Business will delay their expansion. So in general, the consumption goes down, production also go down. That's why the economy will shrink or become slower in terms of their growth. So that is something that uh, uh, any economy doesn't want because you are just fresh out of COVID and trying to recover from it. And now we have to deal with uh, slower growth due to this interest rate rising. And that's what is causing Hong Kong dollar to suffer some of this impact due to rising US dollar. And of course, some investors were worried that, oh, is there a depagging risk? Can Hong Kong continue to defend this uh, tr uh, exchange rate with the US dollar, will they depack and then Hong Kong dollar will lose a lot of the value. So some investors may be worried about that. Uh, but if you ask me, the chances of this happening is very low because ever since 1983, this exchange rate has been set up. Uh, there was no 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 in any scenario that this Hong Kong dollar was depagging, uh, not even during the Asian financial crisis. 
And another good sign is that this Hong Kong dollar is really backed by a very huge foreign exchange reserve. Right, seven times the amount of HKD in circulation. So the ability to really defend this Hong Kong dollar is really high. So I think that this depegging risk is not that high um, and hence investors should not be worried about that. But it does, uh, uh, strengthening the Hong Kong dollar does have an impact to the growth rate, the GDP growth rate of the city itself. Second reason is that we all know Hong Kong have a strict COVID policy and in fact, it was holding the quarantine policy for 2.5 years before it was lifted just last week at the time of this recording. And even after they lifted the quarantine requirement, there was still this uh, three days of medical surveillance. Many countries have already done away with all this uh, uh, precaution as long as you know you are properly vaccinated, etc. Uh, but Hong Kong is still one of the stricter uh, cities uh, to impose this kind of requirements, right? And this means that it really discourages travel, business travel, um, and business activities in general, right? So that adds on to the further strain on its economy. And if we look at their economy projection, a GDP growth rate projection for 2022 is at minus 0.5 to plus positive 0.5. So it's really borderline. It's as though Hong Kong is unlikely to grow its GDP this year. If you compare to Singapore, it's still expected to grow to uh, grow from 3 to 4%. And China is uh, lowering, even though they didn't hit their target but it's still at a respectable 3.3%. And US is slower at 2.3%, but all were generally positive. And even there were some Southeast Asian countries like Vietnam, Philippines, they're projected to grow more than 7%. So Hong Kong, even in terms of its economy, is also one of the weakest in 2022 in terms of their growth, right? So really all this uh, uh, impact, whether they is it the current strengthening currency, uh, as well as the COVID policy have put a strain on its economy. And reason, uh, this is not reason, uh, but this is also to put things together to show you that Hong Kong is in a very uh, difficult position. On one hand, it is influenced by the US uh, monetary policy, right? Because the uh, US is raising the interest rate, USD is strengthening, Hong Kong has to continue buying this Hong Kong dollar and strengthen it. So on one hand, it's inheriting the high interest rate. And back home in China, uh, where Hong Kong is very uh, connected with the Chinese economy, China is trying to boost its economy by slashing interest rate. Right, by lowering interest rate. And that is that disparity in policy, right? On one hand, monetary policy is uh, uh, pushing it, pushing the interest rate higher. But on the other hand, the economy in China is pulling it down. So it is in this kind of uh, uh, very disjointed policy. It is in a very weird place. And that also explains why uh, probably Hong Kong is very different uh, in terms of its progress this year in 2022 as compared to many other countries. This is reason number three. The Hang Seng Index went through a revamp in May 2021. Officially, that was where the change happened, although the consultation was much earlier. And one of the impetus for this change was because the Hong Kong economy is uh, tightly linked to the China's economy uh, increasingly. And there were many Chinese companies that were listed in Hong Kong Stock Exchange. Right, So um, they wanted to include more of these Chinese companies and many of these are the Chinese tech giants right? like Alibaba, Tencent, uh, Meituan and even some of the smaller ones like Ali Health, uh, Bai, uh, not Baidu, Baidu is one of the bigger ones. Right, So there are many many of these uh, uh, Chinese companies, tech companies are listed in Hong Kong and they also wanted to uh, write on the tech trend because now technology companies are the darlings of the stock market and it's weird if the index doesn't track them. So they want to include this and uh, the number of constituents in Hang Seng index will rise uh, will, will increase from 52 to 100 at this point in time at the recording is about 80 plus so there's still some room to go they are gradually phasing in more constituents into the index itself um, and what is the impact of this is because as we know around November 2021 one when N group wanted to do the largest IPO in the world it was eventually scrapped due to some regulations, uh, regulatory concerns in China. And that kicked off the entire tech regulation and it's still, although it's tapered down recently, but it is still somehow 
there's some overhang about this regulation out there and a lot of these tech companies were still very reserved in their approach especially in their expansion a lot slower in that sense so many of these stocks were being punished down uh, punished heavily by the investors they were selling down and that led them to drag down the entire index because they got included in the new revamp Hang Seng index. So it was very mistimed. Of course, they nobody knew it, but it just happened and that dragged the Hang Seng stocks down even further. So now currently the Hang Seng index, about 30% is uh, from these tech companies. Okay, So it is still a very significant uh, um, uh, proportion. So in order for Hang Seng Index to really recover, these Chinese tech giants have to recover their stock prices first. right? Otherwise, Hang Seng Index will continue to be dragged down by the performance of these Chinese tech giants. So in summary, uh, Hang Seng Index is really probably the cheapest stocks in the world right now. Uh, as compared among the developed countries, right, or even some of the emerging countries, okay. And from a technical perspective, a lot of these long-term trend lines have been broken, right. It is bearish in that sense, but I believe that if you take a more long-term approach, um, these things shall pass as well, right. It really will probably be a very great bargain at this point in time. And we also share the reasons, right. I mentioned about the U.S. rising interest rate, which led to USD strengthening, which led to Hong Kong dollar strengthening, which led to Hong Kong inheriting the higher interest rate from the US and resulting in a slower economy growth in, China, uh, in Hong Kong. And the second is the strict COVID policy, right? It has been loosened, but it has been there for 2.5 years and that also have some impact to the economic growth in Hong Kong. And the last reason was the HSI Hang Seng Index revamp, where they started to include a lot of the tech, uh, tech stocks from China, which suffered from the regulatory clampdown and their share price were dragging down the entire index. All right. Um, so HSI poor performance have even tested the even the most patient investors. I have hear stories of people really totally given up on Hong Kong stocks and even China stocks. They just uh, want to keep cash or buy bonds. And uh, I think that is a very natural thing, right? Because 10 years of underperformance, that's not easy for people to swallow. Um, but I do believe that if you do have spare capital, if you do take a more long-term approach and you do still have faith uh, in the overall economy in Hong Kong, in China, I do believe that this might be once in a lifetime to buy at a very, very rock bottom prices. Of course, to each its own, assess your own risk, assess the upside, downside, right, before you make any decision. But hopefully this video have given you a clearer idea what's going on in Hong Kong and you can make a more informed decision. Hopefully you like the video, give me a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you around and I'll produce more videos like this and hopefully it benefits you. Alright, this is Elvin, goodbye.